How do y'all? It is Cody from the Keepers of Nerddom, and we are at another preview that I'm pretty excited about that I thought I would focus in on because, once again, I have a friend that is playing these crazy nutty things, and we are talking about the Grey Knights. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. I don't know why that's a thing, but uh, Grey Knights are here, and they are supposed to be, you know, the, the super defenders of humanity from the the demon realm and pretty pretty cool concept they're very psychic power oriented and teleporty power oriented so let's see what they got and what's changed so teleport assault if your army faction is gray knights at the end of your opponent's turn so end of their turn you can select a number of gray knight units from your army with this ability excluding units that are within an engagement range of one or more enemy units the maximum number of units you can select depends on the battle size as follows. So strike force, I believe, is the 2,000 point, and onslaught's like 3,000. So strike force would be up to three units. And it goes down from there and then up on onslaught. Once you've made your selections, remove these units from the battlefield. In the reinforcement step of your next uh, movement phase, set each of these units up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches horizontally away from all enemy models. Any units that are not on the battlefield at the end of the battle count as destroyed. This is the most alpha strike insanity stuff because can this happen on turn one if your opponent goes first then you do it uh maybe and that's that's crazy uh, i hope they at least give us one turn but it's going to guarantee that gray knights are the most first strike faction that we've seen in a lot of ways, other than, you know, like bikes and stuff and other things that have bigger range or movement for weaponry. Uh, this is nutty. That's that's crazy. I was not expecting the Grey Knots to focus in on teleportation over Psychic, and yet this is what they have done. So we're going to go through. They also have Deep Strike is the, the thing that we all have ability to. Um, during the declare battle formation step, if every model unit has this ability, you can set it up in reserves instead of setting it up on the battlefield. If you do in the reinforcement step, same kind of thing, nine inches away. So that's supposed to be, I think, turn two. But uh, there are, they start the game off of the uh, the table. So we have a detachment rule. Uh, Grey Knights teleport strike force. Each time a Grey Knights uh, teleport shunt. Each time a Grey Knight's unit with the Deep Strike ability advances, do not make an advance roll. Instead, until the end of the phase, add six inches to that unit's move characteristic and that unit can fly. If we didn't have all the teleport shenanigans, this would actually be really useful, especially if they get some uh, assault weaponry. At this point, this is kind of lame because they can teleport, and in 2,000 points, you're going to teleport three of them. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. So... Let's keep moving. Uh, Haloed in Soulfire 2 CP. Is, where's the... Okay, good. So it has to be a Teleport Strike Force, Battle Attack and Stratagem, win your movement phase, target one Grey Knight Psyker unit from your army that is arriving using a Deep Striker Teleport Assault abilities as phase. Until the start of your next movement phase, your unit cannot be targeted by ranged attacks unless the attacking model is within 12 inches. So they can make themselves safe from attacks from 12 inches out. That's pretty strong. It has to be a Grey Knight Psyker, which they're probably going to lead these Grey Knights. I'm, I'm guessing that's what's going to happen, though. Excuse me. So, I mowed the other night, and my allergies have gone off the rails. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Anybody else struggle with allergies like crazy during the spring and summer months? Anyway, uh, this is crazy good, but it's 2CP, so it's really expensive. So, whew, that's going to be tough. And then Radiant Strike, you can use it for two CPs in your fight phase, one Grey Knight Psyker unit from your army. And the effect is until the end of the phase, melee weapons equipped by models in your unit with the Psychic ability. Also have the <coughs> Devastating Wounds ability, which I believe is sixes on wounding, will cause mortal wounds instead of normal wounds. So, whew, that's disgusting. We're, we're just all sorts of insanity here. Now, we get to our first uh, preview card, which is the Grey Knights Purgation Squad. And I've also pulled up the data sheets for the older stuff because I want to make sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. I am going right now. Purgation Squad. There it is. Okay. 
heavy support. Why is a Purgation Squad heavy support? That's weird. Okay, so... <laughs> right now, they they go up to 10 models with a Purgator, Justicar, and so far we haven't seen the Justicar in this, so this will be the interesting thing of what's added in. Uh, the original ones had... can manifest one Psychic Power in your Psychic Phase and deny one. It knows Smite and Astral Aim, and Astral Aim was... It's, each time it's selected to shoot, you can reroll and hit roll when it resolving that unit's attack. That's not very good. And each time a model in this unit, Psyker's unit makes a ranged attack, the target does not receive the benefits to cover against that attack. That's good. Um, yeah, it's just one hit roll, though. And then Smite's always just decent. So, um, Here's where it gets weird. Uh, they used to have a 6-inch movement. They now have 6-inch movement, so we're good there. Uh... Toughness four, toughness four, and then saving throws of two plus. They were a three plus. That's insanity. Two wounds apiece. They were two wounds. Six leadership, uh, which that's not quite comparable anyway. One objective control. So that's just good in general. So they have the core deep strike faction teleport assault. They have astral aim psychic power. In your shooting phase, range weapons equipped by models in this unit have the indirect fire ability. Providing the provided the target of that weapon is visible to one or more other friendly Grey Knight Psyker units. So they are Psykers down with the keywords. And there's that. Just the fact that they could chain their their stuff. You still have to be within range, obviously, but still. Uh you you know, you'll get a downgrade for the indirect fire, but you don't necessarily have to get out of the cover and get seen, and you can actually fire at things. So they have the incinerator, which is 12 inches, D6, uh, torrent. I'm guessing it's just auto hits because there's no ballistic skill here. Strength 6, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. Uh, what what was this? Incinerator. They didn't have an incinerator. Huh, that's interesting. Unless it's in the... Oh, in special weapons list. Yep, there it is. Okay. Then I'm not going to look through all that, but... The silencer is 24 inches, 6 attacks, 3 up ballistic skill, 5 strength, 0 AP, 1 damage. By the way, that 2 up plus saving throw is just insanity. Insanity. And so silencer is psychic, sustained hits 1. Let me know in the comments, below. do we actually know exactly what the wording of psychic is as far as what that means? Is there benefits and negatives? Is there just benefits? Is there just negatives? Or it just says this just counts as a psychic weapon and therefore has different interactions? You know, what is that? Psy Cannon, 24 inches again, 3 attacks, 3 up ballistic skill, 8 strength, minus 1 AP, 2 damage. That's your heaviest gun. And then Storm Bolter with a rapid fire 2. So normally it's 24 inch range with 2 attacks, so potentially 4. And then ballistic skill 3 up, 4, four strength, 0 AP, 1 damage. Just nothing there. Do you ever get the feeling in Warhammer 40k 10th edition that we're just going to be like swinging at each other and nothing happens at all because i do all right so they have two melee weapons and the first one is just close combat weapons so it's just generic them punching stuff three attacks three up weapon skill four strength zero p one damage and nemesis force weapon which is psychic three attacks again three up weapon skill six strength minus two ap two damage let's see if that's actually still the case here uh, the AP went down by one. The strength went up by one. And the damage is the same. So it lost some AP, but went up in strength. Cool. Huh? Works Works for me. How many attacks, though? Three. Yeah, so that's that's the same. Yeah, this is this is interesting. Because, again, we don't know point costs. We don't know if their size of the, the unit is going to change. We just don't know. And that's what drives me crazy, because this doesn't tell us anything. They lost their psychic ability, but, again... I think what's really going to happen is you have a Psyker join their group and all of a sudden you have access to an actual offensive Psychic ability other than these Silencer, Psy Cannons, those kind of things. Which I'm, I'm okay with, but I also don't play Grey Knights. I think the reality here is these things are super tough. Two up savings throws. Uh, this, this is going to be an obnoxious thing to get through. So our next thing is a Grandmaster in... Nemesis Dread Knight. 
Uh, let me go switch over to that. Grandmaster in the Mrs. Dreadnought. There we go. Because uh, in talking with my friend on this one, apparently this changed pretty drastically. And so I want to at least see what they're talking about. Uh, they could at psychic. They could do s one psychic power smite, and then they could know two psychic powers from the Dominus Discipline. So they had three power access, but it could only use one per turn. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. Teleport strike, four up in bones. Um, when a friendly Brotherhood core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack real, it'll hit roll of one, so it had an aura to help other people. Whoa. Huh. Cool, whatever. Uh, yeah, so this thing was equipped with two of the following. And you couldn't select the same thing twice. A heavy incinerator, Gatling Silence, or a heavy psych cannon. And then its dread fist could be replaced with a great hammer or a great sword. Okay. So three melee weapon options or and you have to take one. Oh, dread fists. It has two of them. Okay. So it actually has two dread fists, and you could replace one of them with the great hammer or the great sword. So two melee weapons, and then two ranged weapons. Okay, got it. All right, so that's that's good to know. More than likely, that'll be the same here. Uh, it has an eight inch movement, which was it's down from nine. Okay, so it lost the movement. Eight toughness. It was strength or toughness six, so we knew those were gonna adjust upward anyway. Two plus save. Uh, yeah, that's the same. 13 wounds versus 13 wounds. Nothing there. Leadership 6 versus whatever it was. 9. And then objective control 4. Cool. Has a deadly demise 3, so if it blows up, it could do D3 mortal wounds, deep strike, teleport assault, and do that, all that stuff. Uh, Surge of Wrath psychic power once per battle round in the fight phase one model from your army with this ability can use it before resolving its attack if it does until the end of the phase each time that model makes an attack that targets a monster or vehicle one model from your army with this ability can use it so you have to choose just one model so he would choose himself you can reroll the hit rolls you can reroll the wound roll and you can reroll the damage roll each time a model makes an attack that targets a monster or vehicle unit. It's just in, in the fight phase, so melee. But that's nuttiness. I mean, that guarantees whatever you're hitting them with as far as your, your melee stuff, you you are going to... It's going to get to them. It, it just is. Like The odds of you duplicating some failed rolls is just not high. So Now I say that. We'll look at the Damon Great Hammer here, too. Okay. And then Heroism's favor. Each time you're t you target this model with a stratagem, it only costs one CP to use, even if the CP cost is higher. So we're already going to get reductions in the CP use, so it's on actually two for some of this stuff. And then the damaged one to four wounds remaining. All right. So Gatling Silencer. Sustain hits one. Psychic. Sustain hits. Sustain hits. I can't remember what that does. Dang it. I think it just gives you extra attacks for other people. I don't know. Anyway, it's okay. We'll keep moving. Uh, 24 inch range, 12 attacks, 3 up ballistic skill, 6 strength, 0 AP, 1 damage. So that's just a lot of shots. And it's a Gatling cannon. Gatling gun. Heavy incinerator. Ignores cover torrent, so it just doesn't even have to roll a ballistic skill. 2d6, so minimum 2, max of 12, 18 inches, 6 strength, minus 1 AP, 1 damage cool heavy psy cannon man no ap here at all on the ranged weapons 24 inch range six attacks three at ballistic skill 10 strength minus one ap three damage that thing hits hard it just doesn't have much ap so there's just gonna be so much more saving in this game now it's gonna be fascinating all right melee weapons you start with the dread fists we'll see if anything costs to put it on i hope so because otherwise it just seems like we're just you're never gonna take anything else except the best weapons period 
Uh, six attacks, three at weapon skills, six strength, minus one AP, one, or one damage. Nemesis Demon Great Hammer. Five attacks only, four up weapon skills, so it's harder to successfully hit with this, but 14 strength, minus three AP, D6 plus one damage, so minimum two damage, max of seven. Ah, I just don't like D6 rolls, but at least it's got the plus one. Nemesis Great Sword Strike and Sweep. So the strike is five attacks, three up weapon skills, ten strength, minus two AP, D6 damage. The sweep is ten attacks, so double the attacks because they're not nearly as strong. Three up weapon skill, five strength, minus one AP, one damage. Like, it, you, you'd have to be swinging into stuff that's itty bitty junk to ever use the sweep. Like, just Tyranid mobs or Necron warrior hordes, orc boys, you know. Because you just need more hits. Because otherwise, you want that top profile of the greatsword. I, everything about the greatsword just seems better i guess other than really i guess you know you can make a case obviously there's better stats on the great hammer but the fact that it hits on a four up only and granted you do have the rerolls ability so there's that i, I i'm just so intrigued to see what this thing's gonna do it was base 160 points back in the day it well still in ninth edition but then all these weapons cost extra to put on. So this thing would get over 200 real fast. Yeah, real fast. Jeez. Uh, wow. Huh. How many shots was this? 12 2d6s and 6 shots. Those are all still the same for the ranged weapons. So what did he lose? He lost some of his abilities with Psychic. But he gained that Surge of Wrath, which is just bonkers. And it's really going to depend on point value, like what this thing's really worth. What do they do with it? I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. I don't know. Uh, last little thing right here, anti-infantry. So they hit on a two-up on infantry. Purifying Flame ignores cover. It's a psychic attack. Uh, cool. <laughs> It's an 18 inch range, one attack, ballistic skill three plus, strength four, minus one AP, one damage. Interesting. Huh. It's just a psychic attack. Now, if this gets to happen on top of their other weaponry, it's going to be a great ability just because you go, yep, this is good. And it'll, it'll work great. So... I think that. <laughs> oh, <excuse me. laughs> I think overall the the big thing to take away from. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow, I think the big thing to take away from this is this is streamlined and they're going to be teleporty as all get out alpha strikers. They don't have a lot of AP, but what they have here is just bonkers amounts of teleport in and hit not necessarily hard but lots and lots of shots and i think they're going to be quite obnoxious uh the psychic not showing up as much right here is really odd but we will see exactly what they do with the psychic once they add you know show us the leaders and we don't know point cost here so we just really don't know much of anything entire really we get sneak peeks of okay well these are obviously going to be a pretty teleportation faction to say the least but that's all we know all right let me know in the comments below what you think of the gray knights i am fascinated by what we've just seen it's they, they've changed a bit you know they could teleport before but now they're going to teleport even more and it's going to be all the time and it's going to get really obnoxious but i've been cody from the keepers of nerdum take care y'all